Hello there, welcome to the very first quick start video for Cubase Elements 9, Cubase AI 9 and Cubase LE 9. In this video, we're going to look at installing the software, activating the software and also becoming more familiar with our surroundings. There's a number of different ways you can purchase the Cubase products that we're discussing today, but it's most important at this point that you have your activation code or your download access code handy. When you've got the code ready, it's time to go to the My Steinberg website where you can either log in or register for a new My Steinberg account. Registration means you can always get the latest downloads, you'll receive information on updates, and most importantly, you get full support from the Steinberg support department. First up, let's click on the button which allows us to register and enter our activation code or our e-licenser. Enter your code into the blank spot and hit continue. Once you've successfully entered your information, you're registered and it's time to familiarize yourself with the My Steinberg portal. You'll be able to find the full software installer for the product that you've purchased and registered under the Downloads tab and it's up to you to decide which operating system you're going to install. As soon as the software download is successful, it's time to go and find the disk image in your downloads folder or wherever you've chosen to download it. Once you open up that disk image, it's time to kick off the installation process. And don't worry if you get a security prompt, you can always trust Steinberg software. If you purchased your product in a box, it might be useful to go and search for software updates. If not, you should have the latest version. Next up, you'll see the software license agreement. It's important to read this to understand exactly what you're agreeing to. Once you've finished, you hit continue and then you'll be prompted to agree. The software installation process is going to install two applications on your computer. Cubase and the eLicenser Control Center. And as soon as we finish the software installation process, we're going to go to that eLicenser Control Center and we're going to enter our activation code so that our software is activated and ready to use. I've sped up my installation process for demonstration purposes. Whilst you're waiting for the installation to take place, get your software activation code handy because as soon as it's finished, we're going to load up the eLicenser Control Center. We click on the green enter activation code button, copy and paste or type in your activation code, select the eLicenser that you want to download it to and you really should only have one, so don't worry about that, and then begin the software license download. Once the process is finished, you'll be able to see the software that you've activated over in the right hand side. I've purchased a blue e-licenser, often called a dongle, and I can drag the soft e-license over onto the blue e-licenser, and that means that I can take my software license with me wherever I go, and I can use it on any machine that has the Cubase version I've purchased installed. Now it's time to start and select the software that you've purchased and activated. The first time you load up Cubase, it'll prompt you for the audio device that you want to use. Select yours if it's there. If not, it doesn't matter. We're going to deal with that later. Now, Cubase will take a little longer the first time you start it up because it's scanning your computer for hard drives and plugins. So don't worry if it takes a bit of time. When the installation process is finished, you'll be greeted by the Steinberg Hub. Now over on the left hand side, you've got news and tutorials. News will give you information about new software updates and the tutorials will contain videos like this. Down the bottom, you've got access to the user forum, which is a big bunch of Cubase users. We have the download button link and the all important knowledge base, which is basically a series of articles on Cubase written by the biggest geeks we could find. On the right hand side, we've got the project assistant. And this is a series of templates containing a number of track combinations and preset combinations, and they're designed to make it easy for you to find your way around Cubase to start with. A critical thing to understand is file management. Down the bottom, you can select use default location and Cubase will choose where your new project is going to be stored. But for now, let's set prompt for project location and we're going to set a project folder. It's important to understand exactly what Cubase does every time you start a new project. Here's a project that I've worked on earlier and you can see that it's not just one file. I've got the Cubase file, which is a .cpr, I've got a backup file, and I've got a number of folders which contain all of the important information and they're all neatly filed away inside of this one project folder. It is super important to make sure you manage your files correctly, otherwise you'll end up with Cubase files all over your computer. Okay, enough of the doom and gloom. Welcome to Cubase. This is the project window and this is what it looks like when you first load Cubase up. The project window is the most important window inside of Cubase. Now that we're here, we may as well take a look around. 
Let's start with the menu bar along the top. The first two menus we'll look at should have some fairly standard commands. Things like new project, open, close, save, save as. In the edit menu, we've got undo, redo, down to cut, copy, paste, and so on. Now if we go across to the project window, you'll notice anything with a triangle on the right hand side will open another drop down menu. And the add track menu shows us all of the different types of tracks we've got access to in our Cubase software. I think at this point, it's probably important to take you over to one of the most important menus when you're first starting out with Cubase. And that's the help menu. Straight away, you can click on Cubase Help and you'll be immediately directed to the Steinberg webpage, which is a Steinberg help guide. Now this contains everything from setting up your system through to really advanced functionality inside of Cubase. Another neat thing is to type the topic that you want to help with. Now you've got your own personal assistant to show you around the menus inside of Cubase. And it's a really quick way of being able to find exactly what you're looking for. Speaking of finding exactly what you're looking for, Let's take a look around the project window. Along the top, we've got the toolbar strip. I'm guessing you can probably figure out what the toolbar strip contains. It contains a series of tools, but it's not just that. We can customize what we want to see inside the toolbar strip by clicking on the gear wheel on the very far right hand side. In the drop down menu, you can quickly tick and untick specific items that you want access to. But you can take it a step further than that, go down to the setup, and now you can choose, or you can add and remove and completely customize exactly what you want to see. But more importantly, you can change the positioning. So you've got the left and right divider and you just drag and drop up or down to make things visible in exactly the spot where you need them to be. Once you're happy with what you see, you can save it as a preset and recall it at any point in time. If you get a bit stuck and think, I liked it better before, just hit the reset all button and it will restore the factory default. Next up, we've got the transport bar and it's down the bottom and the transport bar also does pretty much what it says it's doing. It gets you to places. You've got record, play, stop, fast forward, rewind. You've got a series of locators. You've got the tempo and over on the far right hand side, you've also got a gear wheel that you can use to customize the transport bar. Speaking of customizing, we've got the layout tool up in the top right hand corner and we can choose exactly what we want to see in the project window. You can also show and hide the transport bar. Now it's time to get ourselves familiar with the different zones in the project window. The right zone houses the VST instrument racks and the media bay. The media bay is the heart and soul of Cubase. It's a powerhouse library that comes packed full of Steinberg functionality. We can see all of the instruments that we have installed. We can view all of the presets that come bundled with Cubase. And the thing about viewing presets is you don't need to go searching for an instrument for a particular sound. You just find it in the library and click on it to load it into the project. Then you've got loops and samples, which are things like audio loops, MIDI loops, MIDI patterns. Find a sound you like, right mouse click and load it into an instrument or just simply drag and drop it over into the project window. I've just moved a sample over into the new sample control, which is housed in the lower zone, along with the mix console, various different editors, the sample control, which allows me to basically take an audio sample and completely manipulate it and mess with it, and chord pads, which are an incredible compositional tool. But we're going to deal with this functionality in later videos. On the left-hand side, we've got the left zone, which houses the track inspector and the editor controls. Now this will change depending on what type of track I have selected. It's now super easy to edit something that you've just recorded. Just double click on it and you'll get the editor to show up in the lower zone. And over in the left zone, you've got the all new editor control. You'll find pretty much everything you need in these two tabs over in the left zone. And of course they change depending on what I have selected. For instance, an audio track is very different to the sampler track, which is also different to a VST instrument track. As you familiarize yourself with the left zone, you'll find tabs that are fairly constant no matter what you have selected. Things like sends and of course audio inserts. So we can apply Steinberg inserts and third party inserts inside of this tab. Down the bottom, we've got the audio fader and the pan control. As I move the pan, you probably also notice the pan moving up the top. So it depends on which tab we have open, but this is the beautiful thing about Cubase. There's always a secondary or a third series of controls. And these reoccurring controls mean that we've got access to really important functionality very quickly. For instance, things like solo, mute, 
volume, pan, and different track controls. And I can think of about four or five places where I have instant access to those track controls right here inside of the project window. The workplace inside of Cubase is completely customizable, so it's important to show you how you can scale everything. In the bottom right hand corner of the project window, you can zoom in and out vertically or horizontally. You can also use G and H on your computer keypad. People work in different ways, so it's important to understand the timeline, which runs along the top of the project window. Right mouse click to change from bars and beats to seconds and various other time forms. You can also move backwards and forwards in your project just by using your mouse to click in the timeline. Once again, you can zoom in and out by holding down on your mouse in the timeline and dragging down and back up again. It's really easy to find your way around. The timeline also houses the locators and at the moment I'm moving my right locator out to the right hand side. Now the locators allow us to do quite a few different things inside the area that we're specifying. Now you can edit quite a few different things out in the project window using the snap functionality. At the moment, I can freely move an event to the right or to the left hand side. But as soon as I turn the snap on, I can specify exactly what my edits are snapping to. At the moment, it's just bars. Now I can only edit in that project window on the bar. And you can see the grid behind. If I change it to beat, it's exactly the same thing. I can only move an event and lock it into that beat. I can move my left and right locator by hovering above on the timeline and getting the hand and dragging it to the right or the left hand side. Down the bottom in the transport bar, we've got the blue button, which is the cycle button. And this is one of the reasons why these locators are so important. Now I can cycle record. So when it gets to that right locator, it'll cycle back on me and go back to the left hand locator. Before I leave you, I've got one final suggestion. Always save your work. You know that, right? Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. You'll find everything that you need to know on Steinberg products on the Steinberg YouTube channel, the webpage, and also our social media pages. I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for stopping by.